Hey everyone, this is Jared Hill with Coldesi, and today I want to show you how to create several very basic designs for your direct-to-garment printing needs. Now, we do talk to a lot of people just starting out, or maybe they want to start out with the t-shirt business, but they're a little nervous about the graphics. You know, they may not even know how to make them, uh, what software to use, if you have to purchase that software, or if it's free. You know, again, you may be an artist wanting to start a business, you don't want to do the graphics yourself and you want to source it out and you don't even know where to look. So we do get these type of questions often, but what I want to do is I want to show you how to use Photoshop for some basic elements. Now Adobe Photoshop is a program you pay for. Uh, they do have services in which you can essentially rent the software much more economically. Uh, there are other programs like GIMP, for example, which is open source software, meaning you don't have to pay for it. Uh, but really what you're looking for in any graphic programs are uh, features, features that help simplify and speed up the process. So I'm just going to show you Photoshop here, uh, just to give you an idea of some things that you can do with it. So I want to get started, and the first thing I want to do is just talk about resolutions. So when you're looking on the internet and you're finding images, most of those images are what's called 72 pixels per inch or PPI. Uh, now when you in the printing world they use DPI which is dots per inch so it's actually a term used in you know how many dots are in an inch or a square inch rather but in this case with resolution on the internet or graphics it's PPI pixels per inch. So what we want to do is look at this file. We can see it's very pixelated, right? It's not clean, it's not sharp. And the reason for that is if we go into our image size, we can see it's three inches wide or 216 pixels uh, and a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. So this is a considered a re low resolution file. So when you're creating graphics, you want a higher resolution file than what we see here. Now oftentimes people might take a low resolution file and try to increase the quality by increasing the size. But what we're looking at is when we zoom in here you see all these little pixels. These pixels are really what you're trying to um, it's, it's just the building block of this image rather. And so really what we want to do is when we're increasing the size, we don't want to distort these pixels. What Photoshop's going to do is it's going to try to interpret these pixels the best that it can, but because it's such a low resolution file and you're increasing the file size, it's going to uh, not look right. It's going to look distorted and so forth. So I want to do that just to show you. I, want to, I have two images here, the same thing. And what I want to do is I'm going to increase the size and we're going to change this to a 300 PPI image. And we hit OK. But let's say I want this to be, you know, 10 inches wide. So if we choose 10 inches wide by 300, you know, then what we see is a very blurred image. But let's zoom out. All right. So here was our original and here is now the updated version. So Photoshop didn't know how to add pixels to make it look correct. So it's it's not a flaw of the program, it's just generating pixels where there are none. So and it does the best it can by grouping colors and, and you know, doing what Photoshop does. So if we start out with a high resolution file and then we size that down it stays crisp and you know, where we need it to be crisp and very defined. So I want to create another design and this is just going to be a text design. So we're going to go File, New. And remember we're talking about pixels per inch and what we want to do is create this file at the size, the final size that I want to print. So over here where it says pixels I'm just going to change it to inches. And let's say I want to make this 10 inches wide by 5 inches tall, and we want 300 dpi. Now I'm going to design this RGB with a transparent background. And I'll show you what that means here in just a second. So here's my design. So we have this checkered board pattern, which simply means it's a transparency. There's nothing there. That's what this means. Over here in my layers palette, 
it says layer one and again it's also showing me that it's with the checkered board pattern it's a transparency right so what I want to do is let's just take my text tool so in Photoshop the text tool is T and in like other programs you may it may be the letter A but if you don't see any of these tools or any of these layers or anything like that under window you can see selections things that you can turn on and off tools should be automatically turned on but if it's not it's right here and layers is right here which I'm looking over here on the side here so with my text tool selected I'm just going to go ahead and click somewhere and then I'm going to type in my first word All right. so this is engineer it's in white but let's just say I want to make this I don't know just a different color so what we want to do is in our properties tab uh, window again under here there's properties if you don't see that there you can turn that on or you can also click on the text tool and when you do that you should have another properties window pop up and you can also change it here uh, but just for speed and simplicity it's it I'll just use my properties tab over here and what I want to do is just change this to say red now in RGB that's the mode we're working in red green blue uh, red is just 255, green would be zero, blue would be zero, and that gives me a nice solid red. I also want to change my font. Let's say I don't like this font. Uh, let's just go to impact. Okay. Now, this is a little bit bigger than what I want it. I want it to be in the confines of this. Now, I can come and change my font size and, you know, change it here use my down arrow um, while clicking on here one time and it, it goes to a live preview uh, but what I like to do what I think helps is under the edit free transform I use control T as well but edit free transform so if I do control T now you can see I have these little window these little um, nodes and so forth so if I want to size this up, I can just click and drag and make it bigger, smaller, very quickly without having to be concerned about what size, what actual size I'm using. To effect, uh, make that go into effect, just hit my Enter key. And then I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up. All right, so we have my first layer. Now we look over here, we see the layer now it says engineer and it has a T next to it just meaning that this is a text layer uh, so we're gonna go ahead and create a rectangle here and just make it the width of the lettering and now we can see that uh, I want this to be red as well so over here in my properties if I click on it it does tell me recently used colors uh, which I can see is over here is this red and then we're good there and we're going to go ahead and click again and then we'll just type in something else All right again we want this let's say to be white now white is 255 255 255 you can also click and drag just for speed and you click and drag into the corners where the color is and again I'm going to do control T I'm going to make this smaller I'm going to fit it within my box. Hit enter and nudge it with my arrow keys. Now I, I think this engineer be, needs to be taller. So what I'm going to do is see over here in my layers, see where it says I'm not arguing. It's on top of this other layer. But if I put it down below, it's actually behind this layer. So uh, layer uh, where, where the layers are make a difference. But what I want to do is, let's say I want to make this engineer bigger, but I need to move I'm not arguing down along with this rectangle. If, but only I'm not arguing is selected. So if I move this, only that layer is selected. So I want to select them both. So I'm going to hold my shift key and just click both of them. Now when I move it down, you can see they both move at the same time. I'm going to go back to my engineer layer, control T, 
and let's just make it taller. That's a little bit better. I'll hit enter. Okay. And one more time, I'm going to create another layer and then type in my last element of this design. Okay. And I'm going to go back to control T. Now I can, if I want to um, size left and right and everything at the same time, what I can do is if I hold in my Alt key using a PC, my left and right will size down at the same time. So you see, so it's just a quicker way to size up or down. Now I let go after I made sure that the left is in the correct spot and I just kind of resize, hit OK. And there we go. Now I really want a transparent background. I don't want this to be white on red. That way, if whatever color of shirt I, I want to print on, I want to be able to expose the background. Uh, in order to do this, I want to remove the, this I'm not arguing from the rectangle. But this rectangle is in a special type of um, image. It's not a rasterized image at this at this stage. So I can't just delete what I want out of this rectangle. So if I right click on this layer where it says rectangle one, I just scroll up to where it says rasterize layer. I click on that and now it's actually a raster. It's all pixelated. There's pixels where before there were no pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and where it says I'm not arguing, I'm going to hold in my control key and then I'm going to click on this icon here, the T. And what it does is selects all the text that was on that layer. And I'm just going to shut it off by turning this I. Right? Clicking on this I, it disappeared. Now with my rectangle layer selected, when I hit the delete key, now what we have is a reversed out image. So if we go back to this layer one, let's just say we wanted to print on a green shirt, which I would not do as you can see looks terrible but if I wanted to print on a green shirt I can do that and you can see that I'm not arguing is actually the color of the green okay so this is my first design um, what works best is once you're finally at the uh, the final design you can save this for to be able to edit later but you can also merge everything so with um, into one layer so what you can see here is we can right click on any of these layers and go merge visible. But you can also go to the layers tab up here and do the same thing. But one of your layers, active layers, have, has to be selected. If I select this one here, merge visible is not here. right? So we have to make sure that we're selecting an active layer. Then we can merge everything into one. And we'll go ahead and select that last layer, the text layer, and I'll just delete it with the trash can down here. And yes. And this is our first design. Another area I want to show, here's a photo that if you look, chances are it would not print very well. And the reason for this is because of all the light tones, the dark tones, and the mid tones. So anything that's light, anything that's dark, and all the tones in the middle, are very very similar so when printing with directing garment printers quite often it just blur blends in too much and really doesn't look good plus there's a tonal value on here that I don't really want to use it's it's great for Instagram or you know social media but for printing on a t-shirt maybe it's not the best so there's a few tools I wanted to use real quick it's very simple uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is size my image so I'm going to go to image image size and we can see this is 41 inches wide now if you want to make sure that your image is going to be correct when we size this resolution to from 72 ppi all the way up to 300 we can uncheck this resample now you see these links mean if I change any of these these all change at the same rate so if I change this to, let's say, 2 pixels per inch, now all of a sudden it's 1,504 inches wide. There's no loss of quality of this image. It's just incredibly large. 
we obviously don't want that. So what I'd like to do is when I'm changing the image size, I want to make sure that I'm not going to have image loss. So what I'd like to do is take my width, and let's say we want to print this as 10 inches wide. Well, look, our resolution is 300.8. So technically, I could leave that as, as is, or if you have OCD tendencies like, like maybe I do on occasion, I'll, un I'll check the resample again and just go ahead and get rid of that 0.8. All right, so really there's no image loss here whatsoever. Now, another thing that I want to do is I want to get rid of all these. Uh, well, let's get rid of the tone first. This tone is really um, muted. I mean, it's again, it's got this purplish, yellowish haze to it that I really don't think is good for printing a photo. Uh, the nice thing is there are uh, little tools in here that are automated. So if we look up here, we go to image, we can see auto tone, auto contrast, auto color. This is tonal in value, right? So it's the tone of the image that I want to adjust. Now again, you can change, you can click on these and undo it if you don't like it. But I'm just going to choose auto tone and see, let's see what it does. I can go in there and manually do it, but some of these features do an extremely good job with a click of a button. And look at that. So we've got a really nice overall design. It still has a little bit of yellow in it, a little bit of green. Um, the green looks good, the yellow maybe a little too much. But again, we can also do auto color. So look at that. So it kind of toned it down, got rid of some of that yellow as well. So overall, I think this is good, but I really want to adjust it a little bit more. So again, I want my lights to be light, my darks to be dark, and my midtones to have a good separation in value from my lights and darks. If they're too close together, you, you end up with a, a not so great image. And one way to tell that in all reality is blur your eyes. When you look at a photo, if you blur your eyes and there's not a lot of distinction between your lights and your dark areas and your midtones, and chances are you have to make these adjustments. Now I like making them anyway just because uh, I, I know the results are really, really spectacular when you do simple things like this. So what I did, um, let me go back to that, show you what I did. I go to image, adjustments, and levels. Now there's curves and exposures, brightness, contrast, there's all these different features. I like levels. I think it's simple to use and it's very effective. A lot of people like curves, but there's a little bit more involved in the curve. Uh, I like levels because it's more, uh, I just use it on a global, like all the different colors at once. But anyway, when I open up my levels panel, we can see we have this little histogram and it you can see where it's low and it starts to rise sharp comes up drops back down goes up and then down again so this area here when I click on this node and hold it this is my dark so watch what happens when I slide it to the right everything gets dark let's go to the right this is my lights slide it to the left everything goes really light and this is my midtone slide to the left slide to the right okay so that's essentially how this works. Now there's little eyedropper tools you can do and click in this and that, but in all reality, the simplest method, in my opinion, for t-shirts is to grab this node, and you're looking at the photo when you do this, but what I'm gonna do is right about where this starts to take, this ramp starts to go up, that's where I'll probably stop. So probably somewhere in here. So you see these dark areas got darker, now the midtones get darker too, but we'll make that adjustment here in a second. And my lights, I'll probably kind of do the same thing. I don't want to go too much because then you can look, let's say in this forehead right here, it's way too bright or too, too reflective. So obviously we don't want to go too much, but so there's a threshold in there somewhere, but we'll say maybe like right here. And then my midtones, I might want to go just a little bit lighter all right, but if we go to preview and unpreview, believe it or not, that little subtle difference will make a very, very big difference. So here is, let's say, our overall design. And again, if I wanted to, I can go in there and do different color balance. Let's say maybe it's just a little too much yellow. I can bring that down a little bit. 
you know, so there's, there's different things I can do to help tweak this a little bit better. Um, now this is already a good quality image, but there is something, another area that we like to do quite a bit is go to filter and we're going to sharpen and unsharp mask. What this does is this helps sharpen your images. Now I'll show you what happens when you go way, 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 way too much. All right. So obviously, you know, this is very hard edges. We don't want that. We want subtleness. So we're just going to go ahead and bring this down. And again, this is all visual. You'll just, you'll look at it and you'll kind of get an idea as you go. And, but I'm just going to increase this a little bit. And here we go. So there we go. Now, what this does is let's if, let's just undo it real quick. So you can see this is blurrier. When I go back, it's everything sharpened. Now on a T-shirt, this actually looks really really good. So really, that's that's it on that design. Now just to kind of give you an idea of what it looked like before, I'll just bring it in right here. All right, so there it is versus that. Okay, so that's pretty much the simplicity of it. But let's go ahead and move on to the last area. Let's just zoom in and just take a look and see what's happening. Oh, look at that. We got a backpack with a baby. So well, this, this image to me looks a little muted, uh, but we'll, we'll adjust the color here in a moment. But what I want to do is I want to add a um, some border in here and some text. Okay, And this is all subjective. This is all according to what you want, what you want to do, um, you know, what looks good to you, what looks good to your customers, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to image size, select deselect rather, uh, resample. I'm going to change this again. Let's just say this one is 11 inches wide. Now we can see our resolution is 447 pixels per inch. So I'm going to check resample again. And this time I'm just going to change this to 300. Now remember if it was lower and you change it to 300, it may add pixels where you don't want it. So it's, again, it's always better to start out with a, a higher resolution image. Now there are uh, rulers here that um, if I right click on this and I go to inches, for example, you can see, well, it shows how wide it is, 0 to 11. So it's telling me this is 11 inches. Now I can control key and R to turn that ruler on and off. Well, what I want to do is I want to put a border on here. I want to find the center of this image. One of the quickest, simplest ways, and you can actually click and drag and it snaps right to the center. So it tells me my X coordinate is 5.5 inches where I know it's overall is 11. Another neat little trick you can do is right click on the ruler and change it to percent. So now we go to 50%. So now I know no matter what that width was, maybe I didn't know what the width was and I wanted the center. Now with the percent, it's 50%. So I know it's exactly 50%. So we're going to do the same thing top to bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our rectangle tool again. And when we click in the center, it's going to start in the center. And if I hold in my Alt key, while I do this, you can see it changes in every direction at the same time. So let's just say we want to go make a border like this, right? But I want it to be a line border. I don't want it to be a fill. So really, what I would do is over here in my Properties tab, I'm going to click on my Fill, turn that off, which is shows a, a, a red line through it, which means there's nothing there. And on my border, uh, we'll just click on White. And then when I click on White, it tells me my pixel size. I mean, so if I increase this, you can see how big it is. You don't, I don't want to get too crazy. Uh, so let's just make it somewhere around in there. Okay. Now, I want to create another border because that, that looks good, but I like a thin border as well. So down here in my rectangle tool, if I click and drag this, there's a little page tool down here. See this little page tool? If 
I click and drag this and drag it right onto that, it duplicates. So now it's called it rectangle one copy. It duplicated that. So I'm going to choose control T again, because again, that's my edit free transform. And then I'm just going to click drag. And then again, I'm going to hold in my shift key so that I know that all areas are moving at the same time on every corner. And let's just say I want it right there, but let's say I want my pixels to be, or my, uh, image to be half the size, hit enter, and uh, let's just say it's 7.5 inch uh, pixels instead. So now we have two little things right here. Now to get rid of these nodes, uh, these uh, lines, I just click and drag them out of the way back into the ruler, and we have that. Let's go ahead and do text. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. Um, and then just click in that layer and let's just type in something here let's go how about set your goals high comma and well let's don't do upper and say don't stop till you get there okay now my font's pretty big I can you know, control T or I can, because I know it's way, way big. Let's just go down to 48, change it. There we go. Set your goals high and don't stop till you get there. All right. So we're going to um, go ahead and center this. And again, when I click and drag, you can see it centers. I'm not really a big fan of that, this font for this particular style. So I can click on my font and you can see as I scroll down, it lets me see the previews while I'm scrolling, all right? And honestly, let's do, yeah, let's do this. Bernard MT looks pretty good. Um, I don't think this is right. I don't want this and, and all this to be the same size. So I'm gonna cl uh, click and drag only on this one here. And let's just say, let's make this double the size and see what it does. No, way, way, way too much. So let's just go maybe uh, 72 DPI or 72 uh, pick points rather. Uh, don't think so. And let's just do one more. 85. There we go. So if we wanted something like that, uh, but after looking at it, uh, I think it's too much. We'll just go right back to normal. All right. So we'll kind of center it in here. Now, the other area is if you double click on the text, it'll change the text. If you, but if you double click on like another area where there is no text, because this text is pretty long, it makes it a little bit, little bit more difficult. And there are some other keys, but double clicking is the quickest, simplest way to do it. A little layer style window pops up. So let's just say we want this to be white that's fine but maybe because of these clouds it's not going to stand out as well so what we can do is if we choose color overlay you see how the change is the color so we deselect that but what we want to do is say a drop shadow so drop shadow gives us um, the, obviously this shadow effect we can change the angle of the shadow right we can change the distance of the shadow the size of the shadow if it's, you know, how big of a spread. So there's all different things. So we want to go maybe just a little bit higher, um, my size and my distance just a little bit far, further. I'll put an outer glow on this as well. So what this will do is create a, um, a glow around the image. Um, and let's just go ahead and change this to a different color. Let's get into maybe the sky blue but now it's kind of blended a little too much so let's go back to this outer glow and let's see if we can get something to work here if not we can always add a line or a stroke around it again this is all subjective it's all what you want to do uh, let's turn that off and see what it does okay so there's more defined without it so we'll leave the outer glow off on this particular design instead we'll put a stroke on here uh, let's make this stroke a white, and let's go ahead and make it a lot smaller. All 
right? So let's just say it's something like that, and we want that to be just a little bit higher, and maybe we want this to be a little bit wider, all right? Maybe something like that. But again, there's always an undo if I didn't like it. But what I want to do now is let's just say the color and everything on this design earlier, remember what I said, that everything, if you blur your eyes, it's not really, like especially down in the mountains here, it's not really defined. So what I want to do is go back to my background, click on that one time, and we're going to go back to image. We can do auto tone if we want. Nope, it didn't really do what I wanted. So let's go to auto color. Nope. So we're just going to have to do some manual. Not a problem. So we're going to go back to uh, uh, image adjustments and levels. Now we can see our histograms all over the place. So again, this is all subjective. It's what you like. Um, so I'm going to actually put a lot more darkness in here. My lights, we'll just get it to where the ramp just starts. And then my midtones, I could either go down or go up. But if I go up, it looks like all my lights just got way too much. So I'm going to go a little bit lower on this one. Okay. And then let's just say my blues just aren't really where I want them to be. There's also uh, like a vibrance. So my vibrance, if I turn my saturation up and my vibrance up a little bit, you can see the cause and effect. But again, all these tools have an effect on a global, in this case, on a global scale of the image. Let's turn my preview on and off so you can see the blues are a little bit better. But again, we can also play around with other tools. If we go to adjustments, there's color balance. You know, what we used a little bit before, there's selective color. With selective color, let's just say my blues just really aren't what I want them to be. So let's just go ahead and say, let's just add a little bit more cyan, a little less magenta, or in this case, all right, let's go to the darker, maybe more magenta I need. So again, all this is a matter of playing around with what you, with the tools that you are provided. And a lot of times, again, it, it is subjective. So it's something that you just play around with and what you see at the end is really up to you. So let's just zoom in here. So everything looks pretty good. Um, I think this blue probably blends in a little too much now that I've already done my other designs. So we're just going to go back into color overlay and let's just change, turn that off for a second. Let's see what it does. Yeah, I think that actually looks better. Uh, Photoshop and these type of programs have a lot of power behind them. They can do a lot of things very quickly. Um, and in this de demonstration, I showed you three different types of designs you can do. Uh, but again, it's a matter of learning the tools, understanding how they work, and using them to your abilities. Thanks again. This is Jared Hill with Coldessi. And as always, any questions you have, feel free to reach out to us or stop by our website at www.coldessi.com.